and welcome to New Racing Tutorials. Today we're going to do a tutorial on Optimum Lap. This is one of two tutorials on Optimum Lap with another on being how to create a track designed for Optimum Lap. To install Optimum Lap, download the Optimum Lap folder off of SharePoint in the Resources folder. Go to the Optimum Lap setup and run the setup.exe. Once you have Optimum Lap installed, you will need to create an account on the Optum G website and receive an installation key. Once you've entered this key, you'll be able to open Optum Lap. Once you have Optum Lap open, it is recommended to go to Options and change the power to kilowatts as this is what the rules state and that prevents the need for any conversions to have to be done. Now that you're ready to begin, you can either start a new project or open a pre-existing project. Since all of the Optimum Lap work is on SharePoint, it's recommended to open the pre-existing practice project. This can be found in the resources folder next to the Optimum Lap download folder. Once you have opened the file, you'll come to the design tab. This project tree has everything that you will use when operating the basic functions of Optimum Lap. To begin, we'll create a new vehicle using the Create Vehicle button. The vehicle type is FSAE for obvious reasons. The mass we're going to use is 350 kilos as this is a good approximate value for most cars plus their driver. For the aero data, the aero team will have values for their aero package. The drag coefficient should be around 1.5 to 2, so we'll use 1.8. Ideally, the downforce coefficient will be between 2.5 to 3. We will use 2.5 for this example. The frontal area will generally be around 0.8 to 1.2 square meters, so we will use 0.8. The air density is 1.2 kilograms per cubic meter as this is the general air density. Note this is downforce coefficient, which is the opposite of a lift coefficient. Thus, a positive value must always be entered when creating force downwards. Now for the tire data. The current car's tires as of 2020 are 0.203 meters in radius. The typical rolling resistance of these tires is 0.02. The longitudinal and lateral friction is generally changed in this software to closely match what the team has done on the track and these values at the moment are 1.4 and 1.7 respectively. Now we'll enter some engine and drivetrain data. We'll enter some very basic engine data at 1 and 1000 RPM. The engine torque can be found in the MREX 188 technical data sheet. It can be seen that the maximal peak motor torque is 90 newton meters and we'll be using this as the motors in an SAE race are generally only on for short bursts. Since we have two motors we require 180 newton meters of torque. Once we have two set pieces of engine data, we'll now go down to the gearbox as we only have one gear that needs to be entered. The final drive ratio chosen by the team is 4.167. The drive efficiency of a chain drive is between 95 and 98%. Now we have some basic engine data, we can flesh out this engine data torque graph to allow us to finish the model. Due to the power limitations in FSAE, we need to cannot run the motors at 180 newton meters the whole time. Once 4000 RPM is reached, you can see that the power reaches 75 kilowatts. It is at this time that we want to start reducing the amount of torque coming from the motors. This is done in a series of hand calcs or an Excel spreadsheet to provide us torque data at this particular engine speed to reach the 80 kilowatt limit. To find the torque to keep the power set at 80 RPM, we use the formula of torque and power and RPM. In these units, there is also a scaling factor of 8.554. To enter this equation, we use equals times the power times 9.5488 divided by the RPM. Now that's done, our vehicle model is complete. Once the vehicle is complete, a track is required. Since we have tracks, we will use one of those. Creation of tracks will be gone over in another video. To simulate on a track with a car, we use the simulation tab. We select simulate and we select the vehicle that we want to simulate as well as tracks we would like to simulate it on. Multiple vehicles can be simulated at the same time. These results are then, then displayed in the project tree. Now the simulation is complete, a graph can be created using the distance chart button. Any parameters that are available can be used in the X and Y axis. In this case, we will use the lapse time and speed. This gives us a look at the lap time and speeds over the course of the lap. This graph is slightly difficult to read at the moment due to the great difference in times between the longest and shortest results. To remove these short or long results, just deselect the checkboxes on the left. Now we have our graph more readily readable, we can discern what the car is doing. 
On the speed time graph, any flats that are not at the top of the graph indicate grip limited portions of the track. This means that additional downforce would be beneficial to the car to get around the track faster as this would raise these flats higher up in the speed. As you can see when comparing the red and orange graphs, the difference between the EV2 and EV3 vehicles that are represented by them is quite substantial. As now with the optimum in the name of optimum lap comes into play, we can run simulations of batch runs of a vehicle with, on a set track with a particular parameter. This parameter should be started with a wide range and a large number of steps initially. Before simulating this, remove all but the vehicle you are simulating from the results, otherwise it will distort the graph and removing it later will cause the program to crash. Once the results are generated, it can be seen that different masses produce different lap times. Since this is mass, there is always going to be a slower lap time with increased mass. However, the scale is quite small. The difference between our vehicle at 350 kilos and a vehicle at 500 kilos is quite small. However, if we could reduce the weight of EV3 quite substantially, it can be theorized that a good gain in lap time is possible. This is the end of the tutorial videos for optimum lap general operations. There will be another video on how to construct a track.